So I had this little guy lying around my living room and I thought I would give myself the challenge of scanning it using photogrammetry and creating this environment to place it in. In this video, I'll show you everything from how I scan something made completely of glass, my approach for texturing it, and how I was able to put together this environment in under an hour. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Capturing Reality and I use Reality Capture to scan this model miniature thing. So let's jump straight into Unreal Engine 5 and get started with creating a brand new environment from scratch. This is a small miniature glass model of an Inukshuk, which is a kind of stone landmark traditionally built by the Inuit people, largely found in Greenland, Canada, and Alaska. Historically, these may have been used as a marker for travel routes, safe passage, hunting grounds, or a food cache. As a result, the reference I need to look for needs to be based around the landscapes of, well, northern Canada, Greenland, and Alaska. So using Pure Ref, I've gathered some images here to get a feel of the vibe and mood I'm going for. And from there, I can get cracking on the block out itself. Starting off with the environment light mixer, I toss in some lights and atmosphere so that I can see what the heck I'm doing. Then I added a placeholder for the ground and really just established a super rough proxy of the Inukshuk here since it is going to be my main subject in the frame. From there, I can place the Megascan asset that you can find for free using the Quixel Bridge that's built directly into Unreal Engine 5. I spent a bit of time blocking out the camera animation too using Sequencer. Nothing fancy, just a slow movement as if the camera was on a rail of sorts. I'm just kind of paving the way to get a feel of the shot before we jump into the actual scanning of the model. I like to get an idea of what the final result may look like before I spend too much time on anything else. Now, for the background, I had some sweeping panorama in mind, something wild and sprawling. And fortunately, I already had some mountain models that I made for this video here. These mountains were made in Gaia, which is a tool specifically designed for making 3D models of mountains. And it's one of the best tools for this purpose I've come across. It doesn't take much before the scene really starts coming together. Now, to be fair, it is a rather simple composition and framing. It's the kind of scene that is really easy to get looking good because everything in the background is going to be a tiny bit out of focus. It's far away and the attention is on the foreground anyway. So really, I'm picking my battles and choosing a forgiving shot. With things starting to take shape, I like to tweak the lighting a little bit and toss in Ultra Dynamic Sky, which is a plugin I use for exterior lighting. It makes getting realistic looking skies way easier than anything else I've seen. Now, it's not photoreal, but it looks pretty good. I'm sure there are other similar plugins that do more or less the same thing as UDS or better. If you know of another plugin worth trying, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. To make this shot a bit more interesting, I then added a large water plane, but because the lake or coastline or whatever here is so far away, we don't need to make a proper, super complex water material like I've made in the past. From a distance, water is fairly simple to look at. Due to the frequency of the surface noise, it often just reads as a smooth surface with blurry reflections. I went ahead and made a quick and dirty material just to give it a tiny bit of surface noise to break things up a bit. I cranked up the tiling to a crazy amount and by applying it to our oversized plane here, you'll see the result is rather convincing. The moment water becomes out of focus, especially when you have those pingy backlit highlights, the results often turn out surprisingly awesome. So here's the overview of that material, or you can download the material directly from Gumroad for free in the link below. So for now, we have a rough block out of our shot. We have a good idea of where we go from here. But before we go ahead and get too bogged down into the details, it's time to scan our Inukshuk model itself. So using photogrammetry, I scanned this. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of photogrammetry, really it boils down to taking a bunch of photos from every angle and using those photos to generate a 3D model. But if you've ever tried scanning a translucent refractive material like glass before, you'll notice it probably turned out like total trash. Taking a look at this example here, you'll see photogrammetry software gets very confused when you're scanning this kind of material. 
The reason for that is because photogrammetry software depends on static feature points, the tiny points of detail on a given surface to generate a 3D model. But a refractive object has a look that completely changes based on view angle. And the result is not great. The solution is a scanning spray. I've shown this in a previous video, but really it is pretty awesome stuff. You just spray it on, it'll cover up the refractive bits, give any surface a texture of sorts that will be picked up by reality capture when you're aligning the images and generating your mesh. It'll give you some pretty great results. It also vanishes on its own over time, so you don't need to wipe it off like some kind of barbarian. Now, to make my life a lot easier when it comes to scanning this, Rather than moving around the object, holding a heavy camera, and constantly doing squats, I fixed the camera on a tripod and put the model on this. The Serp Genie Mini 2. This is originally designed for filming time lapses, but works tremendously well for photogrammetry. You mount it up on a tripod, hook it up to your camera with the shutter cable, and using Serp's own app, you can customize how many individual shots you want to take. In my case, I shot 72 images per loop, which means one photo at five degree increments. Placing the object on the Genie Mini, press start on the app, and it will automate the whole process. It'll snap a photo, rotate the model, snap another photo, automagically. The app is tremendously easy to use and set up. With no prior experience, I had it up and running in a minute. I repeated the loop four to five times at different elevations to really get a bunch of shots from every angle for a total of roughly 360 photos. Now, if you're scanning a larger object, SERP does sell a turntable plate you can use to attach to the Gini Mini, giving you a larger, sturdy surface to place objects on. Now, fortunately, I didn't need it myself, but I will put affiliate links to all the hardware I used here and the scanning spray down in the description below. With the shots taken, I processed the images in Lightroom as always to help isolate the subject from the background a tiny bit, add a little bit of sharpening, white balance correction, and you'll see having a dark backdrop here really helped with getting a near perfect mask-like image. These images should align almost perfectly in reality capture. From there, I export those processed images as JPEGs into Reality Capture and align those images by drag and dropping the JPEGs into the Reality Capture viewport and pressing F6. Once aligned, you'll see we have these lovely loops around the point cloud, which confirms that the captured data set is a success. This approach works way better than if I had simply manually scanned it without the turntable. It is a huge, huge quality of life improvement. I cannot stress that enough. So from there, I generated the 3D model in normal detail, and it looks pretty good. More than good enough for my needs. I can easily generate a texture in Reality Capture as well from the photos taken, but because I know I will be fully texturing this guy in Supplement Painter and Unreal, I didn't really need the texture from Reality Capture. So next, jumping into Supplement Painter, it was a simple process of giving the model a rocky, stony feel and adding some smaller details to help sell the scale a bit. Dirt, mud, grime, bird poop. That said, I also knew I would be adding some snow in Unreal procedurally through the use of a custom material, so I didn't need to worry too much about making it look perfect. This process is all extremely forgiving, and you'll see why soon. Now, why would I go through all the trouble of 3D scanning an object that could be so easily modeled in Maya, Blender, ZBrush, or even with mega scanned rocks? This is not a complicated shape, but that's not really the point here. I really just wanted to show you how I would go about scanning a glass object like this because I've been asked how it's done many times in the past. So that's the only reason I've done it this way. I thought it would be a fun example and more interesting than scanning a bowl. With the texturing done, I exported the textures and the model into Unreal Engine 5, where I then replaced the cube blockout in Oxford model with the real thing. When it comes to the final result of the scan here, I know that the scale of the detail feels very off. The size of the chipped and flaked glass edges were never intended to be photoreal, nor intended to be blown up to a life-size one-to-one scale. The edges are too rounded, too smooth. Comparing to real Enochrooks, 
you'll see it, it, something feels a little bit off. I know it's not ideal, but it was still a fun little project to put together. So yeah, I know. From there, it's really a process of polishing everything up, adding more details, like foliage in the foreground, trees, adding small pebbles and stones and snow, finessing the camera movement a little bit, adding some depth by having some out of focus foreground and midground elements. Reference helps here. And in general, it's better to err on the side of too much detail than not enough. Now, if you're wondering how the snow magically appeared here, Ultra Dynamic Sky has a nifty weather system and with it, a material function that can help you art direct snow onto all of your materials. All you need to do is drop this material function into the master material of your mega scans or your own custom materials and add the parameters to control it. From there, you'll see it's just a matter of tweaking some values to get the right amount of snow on a given model with the help of Ultra Dynamic Sky's weather blueprint. I used this approach to get some snow on the Inukshuk model here, and that is why I didn't need to worry too much about the texturing phase. Another cool thing about the weather system is the ability to add falling snow particles, which really completes the snowy effect that I was going for. But to really make this shot pop, I decided to add some trees in the distant background to add some extra detail to those mountains, because without the trees, it feels a little bit bland and too smooth, and overall, something is missing. Because even though the background is kind of out of focus, adding some small high frequency tree detail will make things feel a bit more grounded, more believable. And the easy way to do that is to use a model I spent a ton of time modeling, a cone, add it to the foliage tool and paint away. It might take some tweaking to get the scale right, but it should work. Here's the thing, you don't need to use an actual tree model or anything and scatter that everywhere. It's going to be a huge performance hit, and honestly, it's just not going to read very well. It's so far away, so small, and so out of focus. As long as you, the artist, are able to convey the feeling of trees in the background, you're good to go. If it looks stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. Except, in, in this case, it actually looks pretty good. So... Now, in order to add a bit more depth here, I'm going to toss in a bit of a shameless plug and use EasyFog, which is a blueprint tool I made myself and is available on the Epic Marketplace. EasyFog makes it easy to add localized clouds, fog, mist, whatever, and art direct these accordingly. You've got full control over the color and transparency, which helps it fade and blend into mountains automatically. All in all, it's an inexpensive tool that can add a lot of mood and depth to your environment. I have a full tutorial on how to use it here, link below. When the environment is done, it's really easy to just change the lighting a bit. Like I did here, I tried something else. Instead of making the scene front lit, I made it backlit. And I think I actually ended up preferring the backlit shot. These things happen. It's okay to change things at the last minute like that. I even made a nighttime version with Northern Lights, which is a feature built into UDS. Once an environment is made, lighting in general is the easy part, if you know what the look you're going for is. There are no magical settings, it just takes a little bit of tweaking. Lastly, I wanted a kind of small town cityscape kind of thing, to give it a more modern vibe in a way. So I used the foliage system again to scatter some round meshes of varying sizes and an emissive glow on them to simulate lights from a town or a city. This is totally personal taste, but adding these here gives the shot a kind of mood that gives me the warm and fuzzies. Living in Norway, I see this kind of landscape all the time. And even though I'm not replicating a Norwegian landscape, I thought it would suit the mood I was going for. I feel like it helped tell a story, make the environment feel more believable. But anyway, it's personal preference. And again, if it works, it works. From there, all that's left to do is to render out the shot using the movie render queue. I use the same settings as always as discussed in depth in this video right here. Again, link below. Now I always do a bit of a color grading path in DaVinci Resolve afterwards in order to really polish up the look of the renders or totally change the mood of the shot. The usual things I adjust are contrast, a bit of bloom, film grain, halation. Really, it's a process of crapifying the renders to make them feel less clinical and clean, less CG, and making things feel a tiny bit more filmic, for lack of a better word. This is all personal taste, and what you like might not appeal to everyone, and that's okay. 
I'm working on an updated tutorial for color grading Unreal renders in DaVinci Resolve. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. I've got some cool tools in the way. Thank you so much for watching. Another big thank you to Capturing Reality for sponsoring this video. And as always, happy rendering.